Welcome and... to the Spitter Swallow Beer Review. That's right, Jammer. I am Shag Dog. That is Jammer. And we are guilty. Yes, Spitter Swallow Beer Review. The one and the only. We've been spitting and swallowing since 2011. That sounds horrible. Hey, beer. Beer, folks. Beer. <laughs> What you got going on over there, Shag Dog? I got the River Rat, uh, Broad River Red Ale, Red Amber Ale. Um, Beer Advocate gives it a 85, 5.3%. And yeah, Vienna and Caramel Melts give this Miley Sweet Red Ale the flavor of toasted biscuit, perfectly balanced. Out with pearly hops, this red will float your boat gently down the stream. A perfect complement to an SPF 30 and an inner tube. Wow. Okay. Yeah, what do you got, Jammer? Well, I got Prism Pals yeah. Amber Lager because I was trying to match your style. It says, inspired by Czech Republic's Amber Lagers, this beer is smooth, malt focused, very easy drinking with a subtle caramel tea note. 5% alcohol, 18 IBUs. Uh, it says brewed and canned by Prison Brewing Company, Doral, Florida. So, uh, and it says made in the USA by Argentinian hands. Oh, oh, they're strong hands. Uh, and. Argentinian. Nothing on the beer advocate because it, I mean, it is a local brewery and all that stuff, but uh, they do have some of their beers on beer, uh, brew, uh, beer advocate, but nothing, uh, nothing here. Where's that brewery out of? Uh, Doral, Florida. Oh, what the hell is Doral, Florida? I never heard of that one. It's right close to Doral, Florida. <laughs> Let me check. <laughs> Between Miami and uh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, West Side. That's what I thought. It says right here, soft caramel note lager, taste freedom, escape your prison. Rugby. Yeah, great. Yeah, I was chatting with some lady that lived in the Fort Lauderdale area. She was actually was like, well, she's a little bit older than me, 59. She's like, you know, if what would you think about relocating down in this area? And uh, I was like, huh? <laughs> but I was like, she wanted me to work. I was like, oh, I thought you were a sugar mama. <laughs> Anyhow, she's a lawyer, though. You figure she'd be a sugar mama. Yeah. She's a nine year old lawyer. Must be a bad lawyer. Yeah. Now, this smells like gerbil. What's that shit? A gerbil cage or a hamster cage? The, the kind of like, hey, shit, you're on her? I don't know. I'm not into gerbils. <laughs> It smells like dog food or the gerbil hamster shit you throw on there. You know, like the... The grass? Yeah, the wood chips or whatever fuck they throw on there. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You know, like... What is it, hay? Uh, well, it's kind of like... I think they're flakes. Let's, let's Google that. What do I put in my wood... wood yeah. A gerbil <laughs> cage. I was about to say wood chipmunk. Uh, what do you put in your gerbil cage? Gerbil or hamster cage. Sounds so horrible. What is gerbil bedding made of? According to Gerbil Welfare, the best bedding for gerbils to burrow is a mixture of plant-based bedding, paper, and hay. There are various types. So I was right. Hay. Paper and hay. Bedding, something, paper, and hay. Yeah. So it smells hey. grassy. I didn't know that was hay. It's kind of like shavings, though. You know? Well, mine has an aroma that has kind of like a uh, buttery diacetyl type smell. It also uh, has kind of almost a sour smell. You know, the buttery stuff already smells kind of soury, but it does have a grassy note to it, but very faint. Caramel, a little bit, maybe. Um, smells kind of sweet. Color, it's a uh, golden amber. It's it's a, a dark golden amber. Head is quickly dissipated. 
Mm. What you got going on with yours, Shag Dog? Well, God, I can't tell the hay smell, but malty. Malty, maybe that's a, a good one. Maybe a little bit of herbal hop in there. Yeah. But, I mean, to me, it almost smells more like a lager than an ale, but, yeah, what the hell. Let's just try it. Pop my neck there. All right. I'm ready to try it. Here's to you, up. Shag Dog. Yes. And your brother. Brothers. Hey. All five or four? Every one of them. <laughs> I got two half brothers, yeah. Brothers in arms. I haven't seen my half brother, uncle, half brother, uncle, uh, since I was probably about 12, maybe 11, 12. But he's like my half brother, but his, my father had him when he was 16. He's the oldest. Mm. And the girl was going to give him up for adoption, six year old girl. So my grandparents were like, no, we're not having that. We'll adopt him. So they raised him as their own. He grew up thinking my father was his brother. I grew up, my cousins grew up thinking he was our uncle. And unbeknownst to us, he's our cousin. Now, one of my father's girlfriends, when I was 11 or 12, told me and my brother was at, at, oh, you know, so and so is your half brother, your brother. I was like, what? And one time I was telling my cousin, he's like, I got another half brother, young. He's like, something. I was like, yeah, I got four brothers. He's like, what do you mean you got four brothers? I was like, this person, this person, this person, this person, and that one who's our uncle. He's like, what do you mean? He's our uncle. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Pretty cool. Your uncle is your father, but also your cousin. Now, this beer might be too old. Uh, it does taste malty. For an ale, it doesn't taste like an ale, really. A little earthy, malty. Uh, I'm telling you, like grass, maybe a grass, a strong grassy hop, though. You know, like that's probably where I'm yeah. getting the gerbil shit from. It. It's like a grassy hop. It almost smells like gerbil. Yeah. Cake without the shit. So, would you say it's uh, got like a uh, grassy bitter or a grassy malt, but more of a dark grassy? You know? I don't know how to explain that. But. You know how you get a grassy with a pilsner? Grassy hop? There, there's grassy a couple pilsner. of uh, weeds or plants, I should say, that as kids we would pick and chew on. And that's the crazy part. I remember p picking uh, several of these uh, different types of weeds, and, and we would pull it, clean it off, and chew it up. Suck on the juice, you know, and there's a couple of the different ones. And one uh, that I remember had a very grassy chlorophyll type flavor. And one was really tart and, and, and bitter, uh, not bitter, but, you know, sweet tart type flavor. Yeah. So I know, you know, I have a more of a exposure to i guess chewing on weeds <laughs> i don't know where i was going with this uh, i just went down this path and put myself in a box man i, I don't know what's in the box it's jammer it's like so, so your experience with certain things in your mouth no i was talking about weeds yeah that's what i'm talking about. certain things no weeds yeah I did Not have spearmint. You ever have Please. raw spearmint, like the plant spearmint? Yeah. Pick the leaves and, yeah, I mean, pretty cool. Yeah. Mine is uh, toasty. It's got a little caramel flavor into it. Got a slight um, bitter. Yeah. I like the umbrella. That almost reminds me of Resident Evil. Which gets me back to the thought that I was having while you were going on about your uncle, cousin, brother. And that was that this can 
It looks nice. It's got a nice little design, a little beach type design with umbrella and all that stuff. Girl on it, you know, nice little girl. I don't know if you can even see it, Shag, though. Let me get it up real close so you can see it there, you know. Yeah. Like a typical Florida girl. Yeah. Love, love in um, prison. So, uh, it, it, it's not bad, but it's a wrap. It's a wrap over an aluminum can. Yeah. So it's not an actual painted can. There, no. A lot of a lot of breweries will can their product, and they'll have the wrap on it because it's a, a cheaper way of being able to do it. You know, for the for startups, you know. Yeah. And that's nothing wrong with that. I, I was just saying, you know, it, 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 the design itself is pretty cool label. You know, it's not bad. And we used to grade the labels and everything. I'd give it a strong B on there, a C plus B, you know, somewhere around there for that that label. The beer itself, it's kind of crisp, toasty, got a slight caramel, like I said. Almost buttery. It's actually pretty decent. Easy to drink. Mouthfeel is pretty uh, light. Well, actually moderate. You know, medium there. Ugh. Finish is pretty dry. I thought this was better the first time I had it. Way back when I first moved here. Mm -hmm. Of course, I bought like... I forget how many cans, but I bought a four pack. I think it was. I gave two to you and two to Diddy. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any for myself. I guess you must have drank them already or did them during one of our regular reviews. I just bought this one like two months ago, but it tastes not as good as the first time I had it. You know, first time I had it, it was pretty good. Yeah. I think you had done uh, a review with Diddy with yours, and I had done mine yeah. as a single. Uh, oh no, I, I did. I did mine as a single way back when I first moved here. I found it, and then when I came down there in December, I, I bought a four pack, gave two to Diddy, two to you, and I didn't keep any for myself. I was just like, "Hell with it, give two to you, two to Diddy." Diddy didn't like it. He says, yeah, "All right." Then I bought a single back in uh, two months ago, whenever hell I went beer shopping, and. Yeah. Doesn't taste as good as the first time I had it. All right, so let's get back to the beer. What do you think about your beer? What kind of grade would you give it? You know, it's not great. It's not super bad. I'll give it a C plus and a swallow. Well, you know what? I've had Prison Pals before, and. I'm not yeah. too impressed with their beers. I had a different style before. Oh. Huh. Um, they're not the greatest. I think I, think I went on about the fact that I wouldn't have called my brewery Prison Pals, you know. Yeah, I think you mentioned that one time. Are they actually friends from prison that made the beer? I, I don't know. You know, you got friends there still? Nobody to hang out with. Some acquaintances. Uh, it's not the greatest beer, but it's not the worst beer. I, I give it a C plus and a swallow because uh, it's it's not quite a B minus, but it 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 makes it to the C plus level. You know. Yeah, this one. It, the one time I had it, it was a lot better. This particular can, I don't know, because it's sitting in the heat for. Not really in the heat, but at room temperature for the last two months. When the hell did I, did I what, what is it, July? I went beer shopping in May. Yeah, so May, June, July, you know, two months. Room temperature, because I can't spit all these beers I buy in the damn fridge, you know, so. Well, you should make sure that your maid puts it in the fridge. Yeah, I should buy a second fridge, yeah. Huh? But my landlord won't let me put another fridge in here for some reason. Makes no sense. No. Is he a little touched? C plus. It's just this time it tastes a little too malty, uh, grassy, a uh, dark grassy, almost like a, a hamster hay. Uh, that's 
probably why it gets a C. I love how you described that. Tastes like hamster hay. Yeah. That's good. I mean, like that's probably that's beer. probably the ultimate beer description that you've ever given on the beer review. I don't think anybody ever said this beer tastes like hamster hay before or gerbil. That's what hay. I'm saying. I mean, you've you've coined the phrase. So now no matter who or what happens, you own that. Yeah. Tastes like hamster hay. Yep. That would be the shirt that I make for you. <laughs> tastes like, no, we don't get it. Jag Dog <laughs> says, tastes like hamster hay. I tell you what, Jammer. I, I thought about not doing beer reviews with you this week because I was like, well, I'd call in sick and take a three day weekend and start my new adventures on my new channel. But I was like, well, this is the first channel, so let me stay with this channel first. Well, you have to respect your. Uh, your origins, uh, origins, yeah. Uh oh, yep. nuclear bombs coming in. Volusia County kidnapped child. It's really weird that they do that. Like, how two, Volusia County is like what two and a half, three hour drive from you? Yeah, two and a half. Yeah. Well, what gets me is I'll get another three or four of them here in a minute. Mm. I've dismissed it. I've acknowledged it, dismissed it. I guarantee you I'll probably get another one. Those kidnap things, but most of them are like parental disputes, you know. Look at that lacing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Look at that lacing. That's the proteins. Yes. Grabbing a hold of the glass of the beer there. That's definitely Lace's waste. Yeah. Unless you can swirl all that back into the beer and drink it. <laughs> I didn't mean like to put the glass while you're drinking it. There you go. You got, got it. Got most of it off. That didn't sound good. <laughs> well, the beer thought it sounded good. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you got most of it off. Get me the rest off. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not bad. I mean, as far as an amber ale goes, uh, amber lager, I, I don't mind this one, but it's just yeah, not. Yeah, it's good. That they put a woman on the label instead of a dude in blues or something. I, like I said, I get the idea of what they're saying, you know, don't live your life as though you're in a prison. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But the the whole idea of the – maybe it's a, a, a loss between tra – in translation because they say it's Argentinian hands, right? Maybe, you know, they don't realize just the connotations that prison pals brings up. Right. And I'm just wondering if they're actually prison pals from prison. Hey, we're, we're, we're in prison together. We're prison pals. Let's make this brewery, you know? I, I just yeah. that's all I can see. We made this hooch in this toilet. Maybe yeah. we can actually make more hooch in a bigger toilet. Right. So and sell it. Out of, make it out of fruit and vegetables we steal from the food service. We could uh, actually make a real beer, you know. Yeah. So it's hooch shit. And a big freaking toilet that we could sell Ooh. to the public. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. Yeah, you know. I tell you, hey, Rat just came out with their own box set. But I'm not going to buy a box set. I already got all the CDs. Why would I buy a box set, right? Unless they had like 10 unreleased songs on there. Because you wanted to support their retirement. Fuck that. Now, if they came out with a new album, I'd probably buy it. Especially if it was as good as the last one. But I don't think they can do... Well, they're not even together, the original members, so... It's going to become one of these bands that uh, is only rat in name. Yeah. And I, I watched an interview with Stephen Pierce. He talked about 
problems with the band, but all bands had problems. Aerosmith, this band, this band. Well, guess what? All of them are still touring and recording. Whether they had because, problems or not. Because whatever problems they were, they got past it because they were adult like. Yeah. And uh have you watched some videos of them back there 2010 with that album and the touring that they did? You can see he's the micromanager of the group, and probably people don't want to put up with that shit. He acts like it's them, but I think it's him. Really. Well, I can tell you this much. Um if you go on that one uh, site where they uh, do these cameo, cameo, you'll find, uh, I think it's him on there doing cameo things. It's like he's in his mo- basement at his mom's house. The lead singer of rap? Yeah, I think so. I think that's who it was. It's like he's in the, the basement of his mom's house and, uh, you know, he's trying to be that rocker of the the teen years the 20s and he's 50 something 60 something years old and still trying to be a a teenager you know you can't be that way i'm sorry and and i know you need to stay true to yourself and yourself may be still following that pattern or whatever i don't know yeah well, uh, yeah, he's close. It's like to he doesn't want to right. grow up, and 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 you know, you gotta at one point in time, you gotta admit, okay, I'm older now. I can't do this like that anymore. But and all the infight of that band, I think, is mostly due to him. I mean, you look at 1999; they did a record, and then he left like halfway through the tour, even though it was a crappy record. I mean, it wasn't as good as their other shit. Um, then Rat went by themselves, the drummer and a, one guitarist. They got different singers, whatever, through the years till 2007, and he came back. Holding back the years. Yeah, he came back, and then they got uh, Carlos Cavazzo from Quiet Riot to be one of the other guitarists. Bang your head! Yeah, and, and that record in 2010 was pretty no, good record, actually. Right. I thought it was pretty yeah. good. And the guy that produced it for, uh, I forget the name of the record, uh, Roadrunner Records, Elvis Basket, really, he... He did a good job producing. He took a lot of rat songs and redid the chords. Like, Loving You is a Dirty Job. He just redid the chords. They redid the words. New song. Blah, blah. Sound like old rat. But, of course, they didn't last a couple of years. They toured on different tours or whatever in uh, 2017. And it kind of faltered. They had two different rats at one time. The drummer tried to do his own rat. Yeah, and- Stephen Piercy, rat. Uh, uh, hold on a second. I'll try to share it with you. Uh, screen share. Where's that at? Oh, where's it at? Oh, it's down at the uh, present. It's under present. Present. Screen share screen. Okay, and. What does that say? Uh, so can you see it? No. Nope. Share. Oh, there it is. Okay. I just clicked on him. <laughs> All right. You must have uh, clicked on the audio. Oh. And Steve, like, hey, man. Joe, what the hell? Why is that up top, brother? Audio. I got audio now, but oh, you got it now. Yeah, well, I was. Yeah, sorry to hear about what's see how happening. the yeah, room he's in, and, and see how he's dressed, and how to, he's uh, get through this, be positive, doing the finger thing, and doing the, the pounding of the fist, and doing the prayer and, hands. Uh, and, you guys, peace out, man. Take care of each other. I'll see you out there real soon. All right. Keep it together, my friend. You'll get through this, okay? We'll get through it. Way cold, get man. Get through what? Huh? COVID? <laughs> but, and, and here's the thing. On his thing, right, he gets a 4.91. Highly responsive. 
and he's charging a hundred and forty nine dollars for a personal video. So the crazy thing about it is Shag Dog, right? Right. I, I shared that with you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh I was actually going to uh do that for your birthday or whatever one time. Yeah, I don't really care too much about him. I was gonna do it but only because it was rat. Yeah, I wouldn't even hey, don't waste your money because I mean I, yeah. I just tell you that's what I was gonna do because I thought, you know what, this would be kind of cool. He'll have a personalized message from him saying, Hey Shag Dog, this is Steven Piercy, you know, rock on, babe. <laughs> Now, when he, now, if you got it from the guitarist, Warren D. Martini, I'd probably appreciate it more. Even Carlos Cavazzo, who is only on one you record. You appreciate whatever you fucking get, you ingrate. Carlos Cavazzo, one record of rap from Quiet Riot. I'd even appreciate him more than Steven Pierce because Steven Pierce is just, you know, he would do it for money. Carlos Cavazzo would probably do it for free. If you, he, see, you see how he, he looks like in his mom's basement there, you know? Yeah, that's probably his wife's basement. It's third fifth wife yeah i uh, know supposedly they always say warren d martini doesn't want to tour he's a uh what do you call it? a trust baby he's been rich all his life he's got a trust yeah that's what the drummer always said now the drummer now the drummer and steven pierce are back in good terms because of the box set they came out with even juan crossier the bass guitar original bass guitarist Talk about the box set. They're, so they're promoting the box set. Now, Warren D. Martini doesn't get out there in public. He don't have no YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, or anything. He's not out there. He don't do that public bullshit, so. which is good for him, I guess. So. Yeah, see, I don't understand that. You uh, were a part of a band that became popular and, and had some hits, and then you want to just disappear. Yeah. It you doesn't make, bothered, right? It doesn't make sense. I understand you might not want the popularity of that brain, but nobody's going to remember you anyway. The, only the diehard fans will remember you, and the right. only the diehard fans are going to be the ones that right. recognize And even you. though I think he's a pretty good guitarist, he's not up there in the top 50 guitarists. Like yeah. I said, and, and, and there's only going to be some diehard fans that will actually know who it is in public if they were to meet him. Now, if you look at Extreme, you know, the band Extreme, wholehearted and more than words. Yeah, um, whatever. Well, their guitarist, Nuno Bentonito, or whatever his name is, they got a new album that came out this year. There, There's videos all over the place. He's the best guitarist ever. Best guitarist. Oh, the lead song of their new song, Rise, the lead guitar part. Hmm. Well, guess what? Compared to Rats, 2010 album, which debuted at number 35 or 36 on the top 40, the top 200 billboards. Mm -hmm. Extreme only debuted and their peak was 65. So mm -hmm. take that, Ben Nuto. Well, like I said, all that's subjective anyway. Rat and roll with River Rat. I like how you tied it in. <laughs> yeah. Not to be mistaken, R A T T is the band. R A T T, yeah. Originally Mickey Rat. Yeah, I. But they're yeah. getting threatened, which is a good thing because take that Mickey off. Because Mickey Rat was the name of the original band, and they're getting threatened to be sued by Disney, uh, Mickey Mouse. See, that doesn't one. make any sense. Mickey Rat. What, what yeah, and. It, there was a porno, supposedly a cartoon porno at one time with a Mickey Rat, R E T, Mickey Rat, like a take on Mickey Mouse. And they named their band Mickey Rat with two T's. And then Disney set the threat to sue them back in the 70s, early 80s. So they changed it just to Rat. So. See, I don't, I, I don't agree with them being able to uh, throw their weight around and, and, all because it's Mickey Rat. Yeah. Who, who, maybe the guy's name was Mickey. Maybe yeah. uh, his nickname. Yeah. Right. And, and it was Rat, you know, the Mickey Rat, you know, hey, you know, who knows? Yeah. But, uh, oh, Chris. Uh, well. 
You ready to move on to the next beer? Yeah, I was going to do that with you today, too. I was going to pick an album so that make you listen to it in between beers. And... Mm. Anyhow, too late now. Too late. Too, too late. Too late. Too, too late for love. Definitely. That's not rap. No. Nah. Uh, oh, that leopard, it was deaf. Yeah. It was a deaf leopard for sure. Ooh. Hey, let's. Oh, I don't know if we can do it. Next beer review, let's review the beer real quick and we'll go in the top 20 songs of this week from 20, uh, 40 years ago, 1983. All right. Let's do that. All right. All right. Thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, liking, and sharing. Please join us in the next ex exciting episode of the Spurs Wild Beer Review. Yes, I am Jammer, see. and that man right over there. We might, we might see you. I am Chad, <laughs> and we might see you on the next one, or you might see us. My mom loves me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>